Hi, I'm Danger Dan Jers, the host and GM of the D&D Real Play podcast, d and Dark. Join us on Wednesdays for an absurd, over-the-top comedy horror adventure starring some of history's most infamous monsters. I'm Ben Magnet. I play Mary Frankenstein, our barbarian. I am Daniel Cruz. I am playing Imhotep the Mummy, our cleric. I'm Jordan, and I play Larry Talbot, a lycanthropic warlock. I am Grayson, playing Jack Griffin, the Invisible Man, the party's rogue. I am Aaron. I play the Phantom of the Opera, our bard. For more information, go to dndarkpodcast.com and listen to us anywhere you find podcasts. Hey, everybody, it's your boy Davis on Con Freaks and Geeks, and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and more. If you want to check out more of this series, give us a thumbs up, a follow, a subscribe, what have you, to any of our, to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel, or you can listen to it on any podcast services like Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, what have you. If you want to check out the full fantastic geeky content in one area, you can always check out our main website confreaksandgeeks.com for the whole package my guest this uh this episode is an incredible voice actor that's been a part of some great video games and anime series he has uh he's played the hero reen schwarzer from the amazing trails of cold steel's rpg series the quirky slash nerdy yuki mishima in persona 5 as well as your favorite neat shut in subaru natsuki in re zero the anime series to just name a few awesome things he has done i would like to welcome sean chiplock to the show how are you doing sir i oh man it's it's on a day-by-day basis my (laughs) dude because like obviously we've got the pandemic situation going on Mm -hmm. um and and but in my case like the initial stress of like upgrading my studio was huge but ever since that finished it's just been a non-stop roller coaster of work. All right, well, let's get into it, man. I just like it, man. I can probably talk ner- nerdy to you all day <laughs> with all when it comes to these like Twitch clips and stuff. That's pretty <laughs> awesome. All right, but like, l- let's do a quick introduction. Like, uh, like, uh, who, uh, like, uh, who is Sean Chiplock? Like, what, what have you done? And uh, he's and, a uh, meme lord, apparently. But <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> um, who is Sean Chiplock as of today? Um, mm. Sean Chiplock is. You know, it seems a little limiting to say a voice actor, but excuse me, uh, it's it's honestly makes up a huge part of who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, voice acting is not only like one of the first things. Uh, by the way, I, I found the link already and I posted it in. The oh game. yeah, I'm already yeah. looking at it too. <laughs> um, it's not only one of the first things in my life that, besides video games or MMOs or stuff like that, that I really attached myself to that I found purpose in. Um, but it's it's something that I found a lot of support in. Like, my dad was very supportive of it, even though he didn't understand what it was at first. Um, it's something that has allowed me the opportunity to be more social through interacting with people who support me in my craft. Um, it's been my way of giving back to the community, whether it's through raffles or now directly supporting, you know, other aspiring voiceover artists who want to get into the industry, but, you know, may not have the same uh, financial stability that I do at this point in time. Um, it defines a lot of who I am and I'm, Mm -hmm. and I'm incredibly grateful that I get to do this for a living. The, the, you know, freedom that I get through voiceover You know, I mentioned about those days where my work starts at 930 and doesn't end until 2.30 a.m. the following morning. But the number of days where I have been able to sleep in until 10, 11, sometimes 12 o'clock noon, wake up and not miss anything because my first session isn't until, you know, 1 p.m. Or on Mm. the flip side, the days where... I've recorded for like video games between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and I drive home. I'm home by 2:45 and my day is done. Right. I can relax and do whatever. You know, mm-hmm. that was before I started Twitch streaming. Now I've ruined any <laughs> chance of having free time to myself at all. Um, <laughs> but even that in itself, the fact that I have the freedom to to Twitch stream and be like, yeah, I want to throw this in on top of everything else, and I can make it work. Mm-hmm. That that kind of freedom is 
unmatched in this day and age. And, and especially for someone like me, I've had office jobs. I've had customer service jobs. I've had those typical, you must be in this place from nine to five doing the same thing every day. Mm-hmm. I can't do it, man. I, I've struggled yeah. so much and I've either, I've either been fired from those jobs or I've been quietly let go from those jobs and not <laughs> asked back for future projects. And I, this, this, this career means so much to me. Um, beyond that, I'm a huge dungeon crawler buff. I can talk mm. your ear off about Etrian Odyssey. Um, I'm, I'm a big <laughs> fan of RPGs in general, especially dungeon instance based games like Crystal Chronicles, uh, mm. Fantasy Star, the, just basically the whole series. Monster Hunter, even though I, I, I swear people are going to get mad at me. I have never played an official entry in the Monster Hunter franchise, but wow. I know for a fact I am a huge fan of the Monster <laughs> Hunter franchise just because I know it focuses really heavily on those team based boss battle style uh, yes. mechanics. And I have kind of played fighting. those and I have played those types of games before through stuff like Fantasy Star Zero, and I loved the crap out of it. So right. even though I've never played Monster Hunter, I am a big <laughs> fan of Monster Hunter. You already know it's going to be your kind of cup of tea. Yes, makes I sense. can I can live vicariously through everyone else I've seen play it. Did you play the original Crystal Chronicles when it came out on the GameCube? Like uh, back oh, in the days? Dude, yeah. dude, dude, <laughs> dude. The, let me describe what my plans are for this game when it comes out next week. And this might explain to you how big a fan I am of this game and how much I played it. I'm going to be streaming it for seven days straight, starting at 11 a.m. and probably ending around midnight to 2 a.m. every day. <laughs> mm. Uh I'm going to be giving away a gift sub every time we finish a stage, and I'm going to be giving away a copy of the game or the value of the game every time we finish a year in the game, which I think is three stages. So yeah. I'm fully expecting to spend at least like $300 to $500 just just giving away copies of this game over the course of the you're seven days. Square's going to be like, do we? It's like, are we? Uh, are we affiliated with Sean? Because hey, I mean, dude, at, at that point, can you send us a photo of yourself and what your favorite character <laughs> class is? We're thinking of patching in like a a, a character looks select option. <laughs> oh my gosh, man! I can't wait to see that. I, I, I I'm already I'm already hyped about this. Uh, I was telling my friends about it too because I remember playing it back in the day on the. I think it was the one that allowed you to play like with a GBA with the advanced cable, and then you could right. play it. You can play it with the GameCube and stuff. I was playing this with my friends for hours on end, and I now since we got the internet and don't have to worry about the cabling, I'm I, I was like saying, okay, we're we're on on that. Well, so. I've got I've got some bad news I wanted to bring <laughs> up to you because trust me, I've been I've been keeping on this. First, the the huge plus thirteen uh-huh. post game dungeons. Oh, they've wow. added 13? 13, 13 new post game dungeons, to my understanding which are tooled around being specifically challenging for veterans of the original game. They said, we want to add something that that people who are extremely familiar with the game will still find a Mm. suitable challenge. So, but but on the other hand, and I'll find this link for you because I I literally just posted it before we started this interview. Mm. (sighs) The multiplayer is region locked. Oh, it's region locked. It's oh, so you can't green. play Japanese with Japanese people. Correct. Oh, just, oh, that's terrible. I just, I just sent the link. But according to this, it's, it's if you, if you're in America, you can only play with other people from America. If you're in Japan, you can only play with other people from Japan. This game, man, oh, it's, man. it's been all over the place. Like online multiplayer, great. Uh-huh. No local multiplayer. No local stuff, okay. Yeah. Post game dungeons that are brand new, along with new music tracks and bonus bosses, or not bonus bosses, but but boss variants. You know, so mm-hmm. that the boss isn't always the same. Amazing region locked multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Not good enough. I I don't know what it is, but we'll we'll hopefully get there to another point. Hopefully, when it'll be like, don't worry about it. But then again, in its defense, switches network netcode. Uh, kind of questionable in general, so we'll see how the like how it would have been how it would have been at best if it, if that was the case. <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, well, the next question: uh, What got you into voice acting? Um, 
oh man uh <laughs> the three word answer to that or no the four word answer to that is neopets mm-hmm. and adult swim um, neopets got you into voice acting okay so you have to hear me out this is the story <laughs> tell. so so i was i was i've always been a night owl kid and uh-huh. um it, especially in the midwest the neopets servers were based on the west coast so when i was right. living in the midwest the reset was at 12 p.m. Cali- or 12 a.m. California time, so mm-hmm. 3 a.m. in Michigan. And so I, because I already enjoyed staying up for Adult Swim for their tsunami block, I would end up staying up until the servers reset, do my dailies in Neopets while listening to the reruns of Adult Swim in the background, oh, wow. and then usually get to bed around 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning for, you know, to get up for school at 7 a.m. <laughs> because right. I'm a responsible young adult. Natural four um, hours of sleep is what you need. <laughs> right. Um, and and during one of these evenings, I were you someone who watched the Adult Swim block? Oh, often? yeah. Old okay. school ones? Tenchi Muyo? You all happen that? to remember around in the late 2000s about this uh, this advertisement for, series for the Adult Swim website that had like these pastel colored it was it was it was this very pastel colored background with this very simplistically drawn character and he he talked like this and he would roll around on screen and be like adultswim.com it's really (laughs) cool you should check it out it's got games and videos adultswim.com that do remember that i do I vaguely remember that? Yeah, it, it, it refuses to leave your brain, but it yes. was so unimportant that you don't fully <laughs> remember it. Well, uh-huh. it was airing like every fifteen minutes on that mm-hmm. on that on that TV sh- uh, channel, and it was driving me insane because it was annoying as hell. So, what does any normal person do when they're being annoyed by something and want it to stop? You guessed it. I did what it asked and went to the <laughs> website. So I, I click on the I was like, all right, you you win annoying ass pastel colored character. I will I will listen to your instruction. I will go to your website. Mm-hmm. Um and uh I'm browsing around on it and you know I'm finding some games, trying them out, finding some clips, checking them out. And then one of them was a preview clip for an upcoming episode of Trinity Blood. It was like a this hasn't aired yes. yet on Toonami. But we've been given permission to show you like uh, a clip of like the final third of the episode of something like that, like about mm-hmm. 16, 18 minutes into the episode. And uh, it it was that clip of the episode, the English dub, but it was patterned like one of those MTV behind the music video oh, clips. No. <laughs> well, no, 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 this is good. Like, if you remember the, the that style, when, like, it would show a music video and little info bubbles would pop up throughout the oh, video. Oh, like pop-up video, like that kind yeah. of stuff. Like, back yeah, yeah. The, okay. where it would, like, it would give you tidbits about when it was recorded, you know, special info about the artist, any records mm. that the song broke. Well, it was doing that for this anime clip. And one of them took you to a behind-the-scenes video where it showed Troy Baker as Abel Night Road in the booth recording mm-hmm. for one of the scenes in that clip mm-hmm. and and it was showing it was it was it was uh like either dual or triple screen and one of the screens was troy baker standing in the booth there was one of the director and then the third one was the the video literally the tv screen that he was looking at in the studio showing the scene that he was dubbing Oh, cool! And it was it was literally the same process as what I now do. So you mm-hmm. could hear the director saying, "All right, let's try this on this line. Add a, give me a little bit more of this." You know, they were doing a second take. You heard the boop, 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 and then Troy Baker talking, and he starts talking, and he's not. They're not doing anything special with his voice at that mm-hmm. moment in time. It's just Troy Baker talking out of his mouth hole, and you hear him, and you see the character's lip flaps moving at the same time. And it was at that precise moment that something in me went, what is this? <laughs> what, what, what am I watching? Like what, what, is, look at this thing. Isn't it neat? Why do I feel like my life is complete? Oh, How do no. I get more involved into this acting thing? <laughs> so, That's awesome. And, and it lit a fire inside of me where 
I didn't fully comprehend what I was even looking at. But for the first time in my life, for the first time in my high school career, there was something that had grasped my interest that mm -hmm. I wanted to know more about. I wanted to do more about. And and that's that's really where it all started. That's where it all snowballed. As I, I said, I don't fully understand this. But I'm gonna get. I'm gonna learn more about it, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna become a part of this. I know what I want my focus to be on now, and that, that is, is awesome. where. That's where the whole voiceover thing started. Was was very late December 2006. I believe it was December 29th, and mm. and as of January 1st, 2007, uh, that is when I began in the world of voiceover. That is so cool. Oh, that is so. Let's see. That's a. I love that story. That's an awesome story to have, man. That's that's so cool. That like uh, the one thing that you figured out, like you just knew this was something that you were wanting to get into, and then you just now had a now you had a medal essentially to be like, okay, this is what's going to happen <laughs> the right. rest, uh, for for the rest of my life. That's that's so awesome, especially it's so young and like high school. I mean, that's great. That's perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like uh. And I, I know that you're a professional when it comes to your craft, and uh, uh, but uh, do you have like a per personal preference when you do a, when you decide to do projects? Like uh, uh, personal preference in what regard? Like if you had to choose a project between voicing a character in an anime or gaming, uh, like which do you naturally lean towards? My to? heart has always been in in the anime sector, and that's just because uh -huh. it's it's anime that got me into this craft to begin with. Mm -hmm. So even though anime is one of the lowest paying forms of voiceover in existence it is um, oh uh, an average video game i believe the current video game rate is now 250 dollars an hour with a two-hour minimum uh mm -hmm. anime is 75 wow that that doesn't even make what really like it's uh... mostly because uh anime has been left off of the negotiation table for decades when it comes to what the union does uh -huh. um and the union basically kind of sets the foundation both for itself and for non-union, which non-union isn't really uh, held to any particular industry standards, but mm -hmm. it, it, it does closely align with what the union does in most regards. Um, usually when it oh. comes to like studio session time limits or payment scale. Um, but the union's been mostly focused on stuff like commercials, live action, film, mm -hmm. video games, Anime just hasn't been given that same level of respect for the longest time. And so the rates have not changed from where they were decades ago. So is, um, are we talking specifically like anime? But what about regular like animated, sh like maybe let's animated say US shows animated shows are different. Animated shows will typically be 200 to 250 an hour with a two hour oh, minimum. That but but really good. Anime, anime is considered a uh, uh, picture dubbing. It, it is a different form of, of dubbing to a pre-existing format. Um, mm. In fact, I think the rate is the same for union dubbing of like live action series. I think that the, the payment rate is like $63, $68 an hour, something like that. Um, so dubbing in general is a mm. much, much lower rate than video games or pre-lay animation as it's called. Wow. Okay, I did not know. I like that. See, that's pretty. I mean, I could kind of understand where they're coming from on what they're saying on that because they're basically saying that it's essentially pre-existing. The animation is pre-existing. It wasn't built from the ground up around with your around with you as the original actor. You know, mm -hmm. for that kind of thing, I can kind of understand that. But to go from a two hundred to seventy-five drop, that's a that's pretty yeah. steep. But uh, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I digress. What were you saying? <laughs> what, what was your answer on that? Like you said, oh, natural well, yeah. To my heart, my heart, my heart's always been in anime because it's what got me into the craft. So like, you know, something like being Rivali from and and Teba from Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild is mm -hmm. huge, and it means a great deal to me. And yet, there's that part of my heart that is still even more excited about the fact that I'm coming back as Subaru Natsuki for season two of Re Zero because. Yeah, that's awesome because it's it's the main character you know like in a mm -hmm. in a series where i'm not saying this to brag i'm saying this like that character is the focus of the show oh, no, you were, can brag. <laughs> in season in season one there were there was a there was a <laughs> there was a point where the director said i thought this might interest you but we were recording for a certain volume and a volume typically is a, a set of four episodes in a given series mm -hmm. and they said in this volume your character your character's line count is higher than the combined total of every single other character who speaks 
in this oh, volume, including oh. lines that are just reactions. Like if if the line is that they just do a gasp, they counted that. And even including all of those, the combined total of every single other character was mm-hmm. still lower than the number Subaru had. Wow, that is crazy. You didn't know it was that much that uh, that much work. I mean, it's I knew a, he was the major, but wow. It's it, a wow. lot of talking. That's crazy. But then like uh it's kind of weird because like you know what like uh, I didn't know that you were I didn't know personally that you were also the voice of uh Noob Sabot in Mortal Kombat 11. Noob Sabot, yep. Correct. Yeah, like, and I was just like, because like, I would say that character is probably the furthest I have ever seen you from all your other characters that you have ever done. Because the that, funniest, go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted. Oh no, that's right. It's like the graspiness of your voice and stuff. I was just like, what? It's like that's it's like that's really Sean. It's like really. <laughs> the funniest part of that is like for the first week after the pro- after the trailer came out, people thought it was Frank Welker doing his Doctor Claw voice, and they they didn't when they when it finally. Finally got out that it was me. Everything went from, oh, I know who voiced that. I recognize that voice to who the hell is this? Who, who is this? Who's this greenhorn? What? Sean Sean Chapstick? What? <laughs> With Dr. Claw, we talk about Inspector Gadget, like, I'll get you next time. Yeah, gadget. Yeah. That kind of stuff. But oh my god. I didn't even use that, and I'm not saying this to be insulting, but like <laughs> I didn't even use that as an inspiration. My interpretate or my impression of the character and that voice came from Black Doom from the Shadow the Hedgehog game that came out for GameCube. That is so random. Like- <laughs> Black Doom, which because Shadow I played, Hedgehog. I played through it, and I really enjoyed how that character sounded. And I, when they, when the audition time came for Noob Cybot, you know, I was doing two takes with the character and the specs. He was codenamed. The project was codenamed. I didn't know what it was actually for, but they mm-hmm. said that they were looking for an ethereal wraith-like voice. And so the first voice that I did was actually closer to being up here. Mm-hmm. You know, like like something higher pitched. And I said, okay, yes. well, for take two. I want to do something different. So I was like, okay, well, if I did high pitched and ghostly for the first one, let's go low pitched and demonic for the Mm. second take. And so that's where that other voice, I was like, hmm, I remember Black Doom sounding like this. That was very, you know, creepy and demonic. Let's, let's go for something like that. So that was my second take. That was the one that they cast me off. And that's the voice that you get in the finished product. Did they synthesize your voice in any way, or was that just purely you? I feel like they did add a slight echo aura effect to Uh it, just to give it that sort of, of it's larger than the character itself feeling. But they didn't do as much as I expected. So a lot of it is still just me. Oh, that is that. No, I have to say it's very impressive because, like, the way he talks was that ghostly image of it. Right. I, I would say it's in, it was incredible. So I he did do a great think I, what I tell people is I do believe they added an echo slash aura effect, but mm-hmm. I do not think they lowered the pitch of the character. There so are times you, like, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. So you did like a you still so you did the graspiness throughout that whole time. Oh yes, did, oh, that, absolutely. I oh, I wow. do. I'm pretty confident in saying that what the bass voice you hear for the character was pure out of my throat. They didn't add anything to that, but the echo effect was something that they added in in post fil- uh, filters. Wow, that is wow, man, Sean. You like you did a great job there. I just wanted to say that, like, uh, right? Oh, uh, with that character, I definitely love that. But Thank I know, every, yes. But uh, uh, was there was there a challenging character you had played, or something that uh, was like uncommon for you to play as uh, throughout your career? Deku Tree for sure. Uh, great Deku Tree, which is ironic because he was originally the only character I was cast as in the in Breath of the Wild. Um, the the two birds came later. Um, <laughs> but he was a case where. I I couldn't do what I figured the client was looking for specifically, so I had to compromise and say, okay, well, what can I offer based on my vocal type and my experience, my skill set, my vocal range? Um, so he was a character where I was I was tr- I wanted to go for something like Hive Mind from the Halo franchise, like a mm-hmm. a much deeper more alien type of voice but i couldn't do that or i couldn't Mm. do that realistically without it being obvious that i was forcing a voice so i compromised by doing a deep wide open breathy wisdom type of voice something that something that because again this was a game that was uh uh codenamed so i didn't Mm. know at the time what it was actually for but i went for that sort of um 
I speak slowly because what I say is important and, and I have to, I'm a big creature. So I have to push a lot of air out. I can't tighten up my would be throat and speak in a higher pitch like I do normally. So big, slow, but not dumb, wise, Mm. measured, just knows what they plan on saying and wants to make sure they are listened to. So, okay. That's pretty cool. And, and that I'm, I'm assuming that improved made you improve better as a voice actor in, in that kind of instance too, I'm assuming, right? Right. Yep. <laughs> cool deal. And uh uh and I I I like you said earlier at the beginning of the uh of the uh interview though, like how your everyday everyday is now, but like voice acting during the pandemic compared to how it was how it normally was, like what like uh how it, how is it? Like is it like how different is it on uh on I can only gigs? I can only speak for myself like uh it for the most part. And my response to that is, you know, it was a multi step process. When the pandemic first started, work completely dried up. I I, mm-hmm. I applied for unemployment for the first time in my life. Um uh, once I had to do the studio upgrades, it was more time spent trying to do tech tests with studios than actually recording. But now that everything is finally set up, now that I've got the equipment to remove a lot of that background noise, it, I think this has become the new norm. I'm sure that there's going to be clients that want me to drive into their studios once we're finally allowed to again, um, just because they want everybody on the same equipment. But for the most part, it feels like nothing has changed in regards to my workloads. And in fact, I think this is the busiest period of my year that I have had the entire year, if not one of the busiest periods of my career, top three within the last decade for sure. You like, I mean, like, uh, well, you, you, like you said, you had to upgrade to a whole new sound studio. I spent about three thousand dollars upgrading, uh, turning. uh, See if I can, if I can move the the webcam a lot. uh, Uh Move it enough. Give me a second. Uh, That room in there, uh, what used to be a two hundred and fifty dollar in a closet corner setup. uh, (laughs) That entire room is now modified into a makeshift recording booth wall-to-wall acoustic foam and on the ceiling that i mounted by hand um in addition to other equipment so and in the total cost of that was about three thousand dollars but oh crazy so so that's why i say i that's why i say i can only speak for myself because Mm -hmm. financially i was able to afford that type of expense and and i had the space for it but not every actor had the time the money or the room space to be able to do that so some of them are still experiencing what i did back in march april may um mm. today so yeah oh yeah in a way though it kind of seems like it's a it's kind of a good thing that they it, not i'm not saying the pandemic is good but i was saying it's like it kind of forced you to kind of do something uh uh with the uh, uh with the with the with, the, with your setup to kind of make it sound more you know right. padded and stuff it's like you know you don't want to do it but once you finally do and then it's like wow this is this sounds amazing yep. <laughs> it sounds amazing now it's like oh okay but uh yeah so uh and i and if anyone who has not been hearing this podcast throughout this time in this episode uh people you are a gamer <laughs> obviously you are a gamer i'm I'm, and, a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a specific genre gamer like dungeon yeah. colors are my jam rpgs are my jam mm-hmm. monster taming and collection games are my weakness they're not just my jam they are a <laughs> vice for me you know it's funny like uh so like i uh like uh uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield is my second ever Pokemon. I never played the, any of the other ones. The only other Pokemon I played was Pokemon Red. And the reason why I even played Pokemon Red was I found it underneath my bus seat when I was at school. And then two weeks later, I found the Game Boy Pocket underneath my bus seat. And then I was able to play it play, play it like that. Oh, my God. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so I got lucky. But, uh, but I yeah, I could easily see how you can get into that world of, like, just wanting to collect everything and try to get everything. So I'll definitely say. But, by the way, also, guys, uh, definitely check out his Twitch page. It's uh, Sonic Mega. Uh, yep, same uh, as Sonic my Twitter. On Twitch. Yes, on Twitter. Uh, on his same as his Twitter exactly. And uh, and uh, but for the most part, even though you're saying that you are specifically like you know a genre, a specific genre, you are pretty diverse when it comes to the game uh, gaming itself. Uh, do you have a fa- like uh, like a favorite 
like uh, a go to uh, on your uh, game that you like to, that you definitely like to, that that you play like over and over again or anything like Sorry, that? Sorry, I totally I was trying to think about games that I could bring up and I zoned out during your initial <laughs> question. ADHD, <laughs> it's fun, right? Could you repeat that question for me? Oh yeah, I was just saying it's like is there a specific like game or something that you like to that you that you can easily come back to or something that you like normally like to play uh, uh play? <sighs> game that i like to go back to uh crystal chronicles which is why oh, i'm yeah. super excited for next week <laughs> um, a lot of the a lot of the games that i would go back to i've kind of reached a point now where i have beaten them so thoroughly and mm -hmm. enough times that i've kind of like eh, i i have experienced them to the full extent where my heart is like i have given them the love that they deserve and i've been able to right. move on to other things um I would love, since they, they are on this train of doing HD remakes, since they did Secret of Mana and Trials now, the next game in the franchise for, for the Mana series is Legend of Mana. And Legend, Legend of Mana. Mana was a big, big part of my childhood. You know, they, mm -hmm. they just did Crystal Chronicles. Come on, mm -hmm. Square. Do Legend of Mana next. <laughs> Let me voice in it, please. Oh, my God. I will do anything. Uh, <laughs> Jade Cocoon 2 was a big one because of monster collections. I don't think it'll ever happen, but uh, uh, a port of Bomberman 64, the second attack. That was Digimons? Really big. What about the Digimons? Uh, you know, I haven't experienced those yet. Like, I, I've, oh, I've heard, yeah. I know, I've heard great things about Cyber Sleuth, and I do want to play it. I just haven't gotten around to it because, again, schedule is busy as hell, oh, and yeah. my free yeah, time yeah. is not only limited, it's already filled with other things. So. Did you ever did you ever own a PlayStation like the the original PlayStation? I don't know how old you are. Not so, the like, original did, PlayStation. The, okay. the closest I got was the PlayStation Two, and that was through a friend's house. Um, okay. I I didn't start adding a PlayStation to my household until I was with my wife, and she brought oh, over wow. her PS Two, PS Three. Oh, uh, okay. I see. Okay, that makes sense. That because like uh, when the original Digimon's came out, the. Uh, like you, I know you said you liked monster captures and stuff. The original Digimon introduced the way you captured monsters besides playing the game was like you can also capture monsters on any CD. So like basically mm. like a music CD or CD ROMs and you just load it up. There's a special monster for each of any kind of CD that's out there in existence during its time. It was crazy. Yeah, it was really crazy. But it's like and there, there, there were some rare ones and stuff like that. So like I, I don't know, like it was really innovative for its time. And uh, that uh, but that was the one that I remember so vividly <laughs> for many for many of them. But that's, that's cool. super cool. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh. I have to ask though, like uh, uh, Trails of Cold Steel Four was announced, localization was announced already, uh, but they didn't. Uh, but uh, I wasn't sure. But are you coming back to the to the last rendition of Trails of Trails Four? Uh, you're asking if I'm coming back, like if I'm yes. returning as Reen. Yes. Um, I the problem with that sort of thing is I don't know, and uh -huh. even if I do find out, I'm not allowed to say anything until it's been made publicly aware. And it's amazing. even it's even even in the case where where, you know, even if I know I'm not coming back, it's not mm. fair for me to say, you know, <laughs> oh, I know for a fact I'm not returning because mm. that can cause people to go, OK, well, we know it's not him. We're going to move on and, and start asking other people. And it's just a weird middle ground where it's like mm. I on some level, I am responsible for not contributing to that sort of culture. So right. the answer Delicate I have to balance. Give, like I'm aware that there's a trailer out that where mm. someone talks that I'm assuming is Reen. I'm aware because people have reached out to me that it apparently <laughs> sounds like me. I can't confirm or deny if that's me because if it is, obviously I can't spill that info ahead of time. And if it isn't, I don't want to send people off asking other actors the same thing that they're asking me. So my right. response to that is, I guess we'll just have to find out. Like, <laughs> Fair enough. That's a good short answer uh, towards it. I will say, though, like, I mean, it's, I'm actually surprised because I believe that game comes out next month. No, in October, I believe. So I, I believe uh, that is the case. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, it's surprising that they have like they still haven't officially announced the the, the cast yet on that. But, uh, right. yeah, but I'm not I'm not going to. And I guess. NIS is a lot smarter than me, so I'm not gonna say anything towards that. So the uh uh and uh, and but prior to that, like I mean, you've been voicing Reen for over five years now. I mean, the, the original one I believe was oh in my god, has it been that long? Yeah, I think the uh PS3 release <laughs> of the, the first one came in 14, I believe. So published for, in 14. Wait, 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 was that in Japan or in America? No, in America. 14 <laughs> uh 14 in America on oh the PS3. God. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like <laughs> I was thinking about like I was looking back at all of this and I was like cuz we did the remake of it, the the PS4 re-release came out last year. 
And then prior to that, it was like two or three years prior to that when when the first ones came out. So I was just like, holy crap. Okay. So like, uh, yeah, so basically, I mean, you've grown up uh, like with your career, uh, with your uh, career. I've grown Pokemon up. Voices. Okay. That's, grown. that's something you're going to have to fix. <laughs> right. Well, like, I mean, it, the character is pretty much stuck with you voice acting uh, throughout this, throughout, uh, throughout your, your, your career as a voice actor though, too. Was there anything that like stuck with you uh, voice acting him during, throughout that time or, or anything that, that I've grown alongside remember? Reed, to be honest, mm-hmm. like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a thing that I've told people is when, uh, when I voiced him in the first game, I was, I was, it, it almost is weird how, how the growth that I experienced alongside Reen actually applied to his character's growth in the game series itself. Um, mm. Because in the, hold on, I'm going to get some water because I've not hydrated oh, yeah. in like 20 minutes. Go for it. In the first game, um, I was younger, restless, and really enthusiastic about doing battle lines. And, mm. and, um, I, I've told people that I feel like I did incredibly well with my battle efforts and battle lines in the first Trails game, but that my story performance was lacking. Mm. And and it kind of works where Reen was someone who went to a military academy. He expected he would have to do some fighting, but he wasn't aware that he was going to have to play mediator between, you know, the nobles and the commoners. Um and so maybe he wasn't the best at at being that grounding force for everybody. In Trails of Cold Steel 2, I feel like I did way better with my story performances, but I really do think that my battle efforts were not as consistently good as they were in the first game. And that kind of translates to how Reen was in Trails of Cold Steel 2, where he realized by the second game that he had to be that mediator, but he was starting to have doubts about his fighting. He's like, I'm not sure... I want to be doing this. You know, this doesn't feel right. It feels like we're tearing the country apart. You're tearing me apart, Erebonia. So, but by the third game, Reen has kind of accepted this role where he has to be, he has to be a a mentor to a, to a new group, to the new class Mm -hmm. seven. Um, Mm -hmm. And he has to, he knows that he has to help everyone come to terms with each other and accept each other and work as a team. But he also is an established leader at this point in terms of being an actual general, being Mm. a a head instructor, a teacher at the school. So he has to be able to teach them how to fight for their lives at the same time as well. And Trails of Cold Steel 3 is really where I found that, that perfect balance. I said it on Twitter when I was recording for the game. I said, guys, this is, without a doubt, my strongest showing as Reen Schwarzer since the series began. The story stuff is good. The battle stuff is good. I, I think you will truly, genuinely enjoy this, and it is the best performance I've given Reen out of the games that have been released so far. So yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it because like, uh, I've actually I've been running the Trails of Cold Steel run right now. Um, uh, I just actually, the, at the end of this week, like maybe two days ago, I just finished two. And uh, and I was like, wow, this is. I mean, like, Reen has grown quite a bit compared to the first one to the second right. one. The second one just felt like they just thrusted it's, him no, no. into this position and stuff like that. I, so. I believe, I believe in Trails of Cold Steel Four, uh, his ogre mode basically comes out on full display. So I guess if I end up coming back, I'll have to be like, all right, guys, you know, uh, to get to get you know to embody Trails of Cold Steel Four, I'm now a furry. You know, I've <laughs> I've, I've, I've 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 taken my own internal you know beast mode that's living <laughs> deep inside of my heart thank you for your support right uh, I, I mean have you played you played the trails your trails games yourself too right like i mean i know like some people may not may i not have played it or i played play the anyway? first one all the way through and uh-huh. i played pretty uh, a, a big portion of the second game before i came in to record for the third but mm. i have not played any of them since then and i really now that we have the the h or the remaster ports on the on the playstation for one mm. and two i would mm. really like to find a chance to go back from the first game and play all the way through uh so that i can experience it in in chronological order at its at its best Oh, so that's pretty great. Well, I got to know, though, too, like, I mean, the, if you remember, if you can remember, like, who was your best girl in Trails itself? Like, Orble the one Bike. that you remember. Orble, Orble Bike? Bike. <laughs> really? Wow. Because never I- expect that. What are you talking about? You d- you didn't even have to spend any bonding points before she let you ride her. That's so. 
That's a good point. <laughs> you have no, yeah, yeah, you, you, you have to impress. It just, it just. That happened. baby knows how to purr. Okay. <laughs> oh God, that's hilarious. I love that answer. <laughs> I really do love that answer. My favorite, my personal favorite. I was, uh, I'm on the Veer. I was with Emma mostly, but like Emma was one of my favorites in that character. She was so strong <laughs> in that game for me. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, Last question. Um, when I found out that you played like you know Subaru Natsuki, um, I was totally hyped. I was like, "Wow, I didn't know that you played that you, that, that you were the voice of that. That's pretty cool." And uh, re and Re Zero is one of my favorite series, like uh, that that's that's currently going on now. Especially, it's been like three has it been three years or two years between season one or season two, season one to season two. I believe two. three years because I think yeah. the first one released in 2017 around the same timetable as. Uh, Breath of the Wild and uh, Persona Five. Yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, so definitely, and uh, and and uh, what I love about it is that Subaru is a different kind of protagonist uh, from the most part in what you normally see in any kind of isekai series, which was like you know mostly in an isekai series, it's like person from a different world comes in, but then they bring in they're overpowered or they're right. super strong or they do all these right. different kinds of things. Instead, he's just like. He is legitimately a he was useless in the real world. No no offense in any ways, but like useless like like as in like a neat he did he was a shut in, he didn't do anything. And then he's still technically a shut in now, but he's like opening up slowly but surely right. itself but the, but the, the the progression of him to become a good person is what makes right. this really really good so was there anything playing subaru that was different from like you know the kind of roles that you uh that you played before uh uh played in other other sh uh series that you were a part of uh do you mean like in terms of other anime or just other projects in general um Another anime. Uh, well, you know what? No, like in general. Let's just, just say in general. Well, it's uh, it, what's interesting is uh, it, even if I even if, if we focus specifically on other anime, it it mm. makes it harder to answer, but also easier to answer. Harder because my anime portfolio is a lot smaller than mm. like my video game portfolio. Like re uh, re zero was like one of the first times that I had a character role that lasted longer than four episodes. You know, <laughs> um, but God. Well, Even Jojo, Jojo came Jojo came after ReZero. Oh, you're right. Okay. So, wow. so at the time that I recorded for it, you know, it was it was a new experience for me. Uh, but what a hell of a first time recurring role experience, right? Oh, no, no um, kidding. <laughs> but that also makes it easier because it was one of those cases where I knew going into it how intense. <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> I knew going into it that you know those water burps when the air finally <laughs> comes back up. Right. Uh, I knew going into it just how intense he was, but like again, this is, I keep coming up with cases where like I really am Subaru and I don't realize it until I think about it. <laughs> you know, when I was going when there was a good chance I was going to be cast as the character, um the client or or the director came up and said, "I just want you to be aware of how vocally intense this series is. I want you to be aware of how, you know, intense it could be on your throat the fact that it could wear you out you know how often you're gonna have to scream or cry or do this all this other stuff and i want your confirmation that you are aware and prepared and will take care of yourself so that you can consistently record for this and mm -hmm. i said yes i'm aware i'm ready i've seen the entire series i know what to expect and there was that part of me that was like this is my chance to prove myself to everybody else and be like i i am capable you can trust me with these types of roles with these major roles and i can mm -hmm. bring to the table what i need to bring to be allowed to voice main characters which kind of translates over to subaru's desire to prove himself to everyone <laughs> in the world when he finally realizes that he has nothing special going for him he goes well screw that then i'm gonna make something out of it you know i'm right. i'm gonna put in the work required to to convince you that i am worth keeping around so mm -hmm. we both had that same level of desire of i don't care if i'm not good enough i'm gonna become good enough in the middle of doing this yeah wow that yeah oh that's a very good <laughs> very good parallel comparisons wow that is so cr that's so crazy now i hope like i'm really glad like i'm loving the se like I don't know if have you been up to date on the season now like are you like uh keeping up with I know the localization hasn't started yet for uh for Reezer or has it I don't really remember. uh 
No, it's been announced that season two is beginning, but since I don't think they've posted anything about the actual recording schedule, so yeah. there's nothing I can say about that at this time. Right. I don't um, think they would care, but again, mm. my rule of thumb is if it's not public knowledge, it probably shouldn't be private knowledge either. Right, definitely. But no, I'm definitely looking forward to your performances in the second season because I'm already watching it on the on a v, uh, on Verve and stuff, and uh, I'm just been like I've been I've been digging it every Friday. Friday morning is the first thing I do before I go start my work <laughs> my, my my work <laughs> regiment. So definitely, uh, Sean, uh, Sean Shiplock, it was great to talk to you. It was really really cool uh, geeking out with you today. Um, is there anything you would like to plug before before we uh, before I let Absolutely. you go? Absolutely, I I hate you know I I hate to be that guy, but it really mm-hmm. is the Twitch channel. right right now and it's not because i'm trying to make money legit i don't care if people subscribe to me or not i don't i don't need the money you're not mm. gonna get anything special in discord for subscribing besides like a roll color but that's basically it but the one thing i would really really enjoy is if i could hit partner and that's just because hitting partner on twitch which the only thing i'm missing is i have to have an average of 75 viewers on my on my streams over a 30 day rolling period mm. um and, and the reason is because when you hit partner, it's one of those, once you hit it, you don't have to maintain a certain thing to keep it. So right. you have to have an average of 75 viewers to be given our offered partnership. But once you hit partner, even if your stream dips and you average like 50, 45, 40 viewers a stream, they're not going to say, we're going to take it away from you unless you bring it back up. You just have to be you know, active and, and interactive with your fans, but hitting partner unlocks like all of these perks. It gives you the ability to do like collaborative streams with other streamers, Mm. multi-streaming, um, team streaming, stuff like that. And it also kind of removes the, the pressure of trying to hit partner in the first place. So, Mm. you know, right now there are a lot of cases where I, I discover things and like, Oh, I want to do a bonus stream all of a sudden, excuse me. I want to showcase this thing I just found or, you know, I I'm excited. I don't want to wait until my scheduled stream to show this off, but I can't because if I go outside of my stream schedule, there's a good chance that not as many people are going to be aware of it or available to show up and it's going Mm -hmm. to tank my stream viewership average. Once I hit partner, that doesn't matter anymore. (laughs) I can stream at my own whim. I can do bonus streams if like, oh, my wife is out of the house. You know, she's going to go hang with friends. So if I wanted to, I could just stream whatever I'm currently playing for funsies. Mm. Um, So please, please consider checking out my streams. I don't care if you just like mute the tab and leave it in the background and then never touch it again. Like Mm. that still counts. Um, what's your what's your stream though like it's the your, same as my twitter twitch.tv slash sonic mega s-o-n-i-c-m-e-g-a uh, i don't know when this podcast is going live but i currently do five days a week thursdays through mondays generally i start out between five and six p.m um uh I, I keep a rotating slate of games you know we had final fantasy um i believe uh, after final fantasy uh we took a break crystal chronicles starts next week after crystal chronicles finishes up and i mean once we're done with the seven day stream marathon um mm-hmm. i believe the new friday stream will be rogue legacy 2 because i'm oh, also nice. i'm also a really big fan of those games where you play here here comes the re-zero here comes the super <laughs> i love those games where you get as far as you can you die you use the materials you collected to to build stuff and boost your stats you run again you get a little bit farther you know that's, oh yeah <laughs> the repeats so. <laughs> awesome well yeah sean thank you so much for uh for for stopping by as always it's it's great to talk to you uh as always and guys thank you for uh listening to the, our newest episode of the uh, uh of the pop culture <clears throat> pop culture gems podcast uh we'll we'll be releasing up uh releasing this uh i don't even know when we're gonna release it but well, stay tuned for when we're going to release this thing. We're going to be on a, you can definitely check it out on podcast services like Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Podbean, what have you, any Is page. it coming to Dreamcast? Oh, except Dreamcast. Maybe Bleem, Bleemcast. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, uh, we're definitely going to, and, and, uh, we're definitely going to be on our main website, confreaksandgeeks.com. So just, uh, tune in and watch out for more. So, uh, this is Davis signing off. Y'all take it easy. <laughs>